Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday webinar. My name is Andrew Mangeris, the Chief Products Officer here at Kayani, and I will be your host on the webinar this evening. Um, next week, we will be having a webinar on Wednesday, and it's going to be another product, and we're going to have a special guest on it, so uh, stay tuned for next week's as well, but it'll be another product, so we're doing product tonight. We're talking a little bit about brain health tonight, but then also next week, I'm going to do what I want to make that for convention. Please do, because they're going up quickly. We also have our gala tickets. You can buy a combination and save money, um, and that will be the recognition gala that will be on Saturday evening, where you can dress up in black tie and all fancy and have a nice meal, and also see all of the see your team get recognized as well as maybe some of your upline and other individuals. So we're looking forward to that as well as we just recently announced that Darren Hardy will be our keynote speaker for convention. So look forward to that. He is an amazing speaker. So um, check that out as well. And uh, any other announcements that we have and that we publish in the weekly. So with that, let's go ahead and get started this evening. A quick disclaimer here. Uh, these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or condition. The clinical studies depicted in this presentation address the impact of specified ingredients generally and not any Kayani products specifically. And of course, this presentation is for educational purposes only. So we announced in our Kayani Weekly that it is Brain Week coming up next week. Matter of fact, March 11th through 18th is Brain Awareness Week. And so we wanna do a, do a Wednesday webinar on brain health. And what are some of the ingredients that help with brain health? Uh, first of all, your brain is 60% fat. Um, it's probably one of the fattiest organs, te technically speaking, between you know water soluble and fat soluble, but part of one of the most fat uh, soluble organs in the body. And so it requires quite a bit of fat in order to maintain the health of the brain. And so we're going to go through some of the ingredients, which are fat soluble this evening, as well as maybe some water soluble ingredients and talk about how they affect brain health. So first, let's start off with the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And this talks about tocotrienols here. And in the brain, there's the amyloid um, plaque that can build up. And it's one way they measure or are able to look at Alzheimer's disease because people who have Alzheimer's disease have a large buildup of this amyloid beta tissue or plaque in their brain. And so one of the things that has been studied is tocotrienols. Uh, tocotrienol to see if there's any benefit to taking it to this plaque buildup. And as you can see here, you have about a 75% reduction on those who had, in this particular study, in the published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, but it was 75 and uh, share that. Um, hopefully everybody can see my slides or see my screen now. It looked like I got disconnected. There we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue on with the with this study here on the amyloid uh, buildup of plaque on the brain. Um, let's go to the another one. This one was also done, uh, this was actually a statement from that same study in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And it says the present result indicates that TRF or tocotrienols reduced amyloid pathology and improved cognitive functions and suggests that tocotrienols is a potential therapeutic agent for Alzheimer's disease. So again, supportive evidence there of some cognitive function and how tocotrienols will help support brain health. Now let's look at another study that focuses on memory. Um, this was published in the Journal of Clinical Biochemistry and Nutrition. Uh, tocotrienols improve learning and memory in rats. And so what they did is they fed rats tocotrienols and they fed them some that were young, some that were old, just to see some of the difference. And you can see the circles and the triangles. So the circles and the triangles are the two ones that are filled in are the ones that are not, did not receive tocotrienols. And the ones that are uh, empty um, up on the higher end, the circles and the triangles are ones that were fed tocotrienols. And of course, you've got to control 
group in there as well. Now, if you look at it, you're getting in the 80 to 90% memory retention on a 20 day period. And you know, for the life of a rat, you know, that's getting up there in age. And then you can see those in, that are filled in did not receive the tocotrienols. And you can see that they're down in the 40 to 45% range. So what they found is there is almost double the retention of uh, and memory of these rats when they consume tocotrienols. Pretty powerful. Um, again, we know tocotrienols, it's a lipid soluble or a fat soluble ingredient. Um, one of the benefits to that of helping it to get absorbed into the brain and be able to be utilized by the brain as well as protect the brain. It's got great antioxidant benefits there. Let's look at just some of the overall studies that have been done on tocotrienols. And you can see, and these are all relative to cognitive health. And you can see here the International Journal of Molecular Science, Journal of Internal Medicine, Neurology of Aging, uh, Journal of Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Analysis, Brain Research Journal there, Neuroscience Letters, another journal. So a lot of different studies. And these I'm not going to go into specifically. I'll go into some other ones. But just wanted to at least show some of these for those who want to actually look up some of these and see some of the other studies with tocotrienols and cognitive function. Now I'd like to look in some of the uh, benefits of nitric oxide. As many of you know, we utilize a product that enhances nitric oxide production. Well, let's see what the journal Current Pain and Headache Report has to say about that. This was a study that was done about nitric oxide and some of the benefits of it. Um, when people get a lot of, they call them cluster headaches, and they wanted to see if nitric oxide had any effect on it. Nitric oxide, in a quote that says, nitric oxide regulates vascular tone and acts as a potent vasodilator and thus participates in regulating blood flow. Nitric oxide is also considered to play a role in processing sensory information and pain sensitization. So there we know there's a lot of pain associated with headaches and we see that nitric oxide actually helps with that. Um, here are some of the other studies that have been done on supporting cognitive function in nitric oxide. And you can see some of these different journals. Again, these, I'm not going to go into all the details on them, but you can use these as reference and go look them up yourselves and see some of the benefits of brain health for nitric oxide. Um, tonight, right before this, what did I want to do? I, I pumped in a little bit of nitric oxide, took some nitro so that I could get my brain functioning properly for this webinar. Um, a great tool to be able to have. Let's look at... Uh, Let's look at this study, Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism. Now, we're talking about an ingredient that is often found in omega products called DHA. Um, DHA has been in the news quite a bit. You've probably heard about it. DHA is also found in a lot of omega products and fish oil products. Um, Kayani does have DHA found in the sunset, in our sunset product. Um, this study shows the difference between DHA levels in the brain for those who actually supplement with DHA and those who do not. So the control group there has no individual, they were not supplementing with DHA. So the purpose of this study is to show that when you actually supplement and take DHA as a supplement on a daily basis, you have higher DHA levels within the brain. Now, what does that mean? for the brain, what is it actually doing? So let's take a look at another study here in the American Academy of Neurology. They said, we found that lower levels of DHA and EPA, also another um, fatty acid that's found in omega products, in late middle age were associated with markers of accelerated structural and cognitive aging. In other words, your brain structurally physically is aging and cognitively, meaning that uh, not performing as well mentally. Lower brain volume represents a change equivalent to approximately two years of structural brain aging. Incredible, two years for those who had lower levels. So we saw on that previous slide talking about DHA levels and how we can increase those. And here they talk about how 
you have aging, structural aging when, of approximately two years when you have those lower levels of DHA. Pretty powerful. Here's another study. Let's take a look at this one published in Asia Pacific Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Diets lacking omega-3, polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFA, lead to substantial disturbances in neural function, which, is, which in most circumstances can be restored by the inclusion of omega-3 in the diet. So what they're trying to say here is that if you have a lack of omega-3s in your diet, that increasing the omegas in your diet will increase the amounts of omegas that you have in the neural function. So taking a supplement again and helping to support the omegas in your body will be beneficial for brain health. Let's look at this in the journal uh, PLOS1 that they published and this talks about memory and they took a control group and then they took a group with DHA and they looked at the difference between their memory, episodic memory that they had. And you can see here that there was a 10 times increase in their memory levels when they were consuming DHA. A pretty powerful study right there talking about the benefits of brain health and memory with DHA. Okay, so next we've got here is the Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience magazine, Neurogenesis. What does neurogenesis mean? That's genesis, of course, is the creation of neuro, meaning the neurons that are in the brain. Well, we know that the neurons in the brain are important. Uh, many people talk about the aging process. What is the aging process? And many people think that it's cells dying, but in reality, it's the inability of cells to produce new cells. And so those stem cells that we talk about are extremely important because they're the ones producing new cells. And those stem cells within the brain are extremely important. When that process stops and people don't start producing new, or they stop producing new cells in their brain, that's when you increase the aging process. So this study says in vitro DHA has consistently been shown to promote, promote the differentiation of neural stem cells into neurons. Basically saying we get more stem cells and more um, brain cells produced when DHA is present. And that's a powerful study if you want to keep that brain active and keep producing um, more brain cells. Let's look at environmental health perspectives here. They had this quote to say, results from the present study among a U.S. cohort with moderate fish intake suggest that maternal fish consumption during pregnancy may benefit offspring cognition in infancy, but that exposure to higher levels of mercury has adverse effects on child child cognition. Okay, so let's break this down. When, when your, a mother is carrying a baby and they consume a lot of fish, which has a high omegas, those babies that are born have a higher cognitive benefit of it when they consume those omegas. Now, the second part of this, but the exposure of high levels of mercury. So a lot of times we understand that fish can, and specifically certain kinds of fish have high levels of mercury, can actually have a negative effect. So if you're consuming fish with omegas, but yet consuming it with something that's high in mercury, you're actually having detrimental effects to the fetus or that child, that unborn child. So what do you do? Make sure that you consume a product that doesn't have a lot of mercury or one that is certified IFOS, like Kayani Sunset product is, that doesn't have mercury levels in it, um, and that is certified to be free of harmful heavy metals such as mercury. Let's look at a study here that was published in the Journal of Pediatrics. Um, DHA during pregnancy and lactation, they wanted to see if those babies had a higher uh, cognitive response or they were smarter after a number of years, if the mother during pregnancy and lactation was consuming DHA. Children who were born to mothers who had taken DHA during pregnancy and lactation scored higher on the mental processing composite of the KABC at four years of age as compared with children whose mothers had taken 
corn oil. So corn oil, of course, being a placebo for it. And the other one taking DHA. So significantly higher um, testing scores after four years. And so it goes to show you how important it is, the development of those babies during um, when they're in, in the mother's uterus and also shortly thereafter as that brain starts to develop. And the brain is one of the first things and fastest things that develops. So DHA, extremely important. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are starting to put DHA into formulas because they understand the importance of it. All right, so let's look at uh, the second part of this. Uh, the mental processing composite score correlated significantly with head circumference at birth. So not only were they, were they smarter when they tested them, but the brain size, which is also correlated with brain function, was also significantly larger for those who consume DHA. So another uh, point pointing to the fact of DHA, very important. Um, when people say, Should I, can I take my sunset if I'm pregnant? Now, there is a disclaimer on there, but I would say absolutely yes. Uh, the, the disclaimer on there is for people who might have other concerns, they should consult with their healthcare professional to make sure that it's not going to conflict if they have other um, issues that they're dealing with. But DHA, we understand, is extremely important for the growth and development of those babies. Um, let's look at just some of the studies that have been done on cognitive health with omega-3s. And these are a list of other scientific um, journals that have published the benefits of DHA and omega-3s for, for brain health. And you can go through and you can do some more research on these if you'd like. You can also go to pubmed.gov and do your own research and just type it in and see some of the benefits you get with DHA and cognitive health. Okay, a um, couple of reminders. Brain Awareness Week next week is March 11th through the 18th. We sent out a challenge in our Kayani Weekly that talks about four things that you can do to help exercise your brain. Um, and we challenge everybody to go through and do some exercises for your brain first, and that, whether that's puzzles, whether that's reading, whether that's anything to keep your brain active. Then also exercise your body because exercising your body helps increase the blood flow to your brain. The third thing that was mentioned was relationships. Relationships for those individuals around you and building those relationships are extremely positive for your brain and brain health. And then the last thing, the fourth thing was to de-stress. De-stress your life and be able to take some of those things that are stressing your life out of it and making sure you're getting enough rest to be able to have your brain be able to renew itself. Um, it's been a great evening. Appreciate you guys tuning in with us. The last thing I wanted to remind you about is International Convention is coming up in Salt Lake City, May 16th through 18th. If you have not purchased your tickets, tickets are going up next week. So we want to make sure that you buy your tickets quickly. We have the gala and the convention combo. Con convention tickets include the road rally, which will be on the 16th. And when you buy the combo with the gala, you also get the dinner on Saturday evening at the uh, Salt Palace there. Want to thank you guys for joining us next week. Like I said, we're going to have a special guest. We're going to do another uh, product webinar, Wednesday webinar. So tune in for that. Um, and every Wednesday, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we do our Wednesday webinar. This one will be recorded and replayed and put on our YouTube channel. We want to thank everybody for participating, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. My name is Andrew Mangeris, and I live and love Kayani. Thank you.